I am your host, Fat Dag, and you're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations, and I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. Well, hello there. Welcome to episode 74 of Wise Advice and got a great show for you tonight. Uh, We start the show like we do all the time. I try and do a very good job of getting to Facebook Live ahead of time. And so if you're if you're on Facebook, Facebook at Wise Advice, you can kind of follow along as we do the live show. If you, if you have that ability, great. I know a lot of people aren't on Facebook. So that's why I kind of put it on YouTube after so you can at least catch the video. But if you're in on Facebook, you get to watch it live. And I interact with you before the show to kind of get my mojo going, kind of see where your head's at and see what you want to talk about. And we had a great conversation about fit points. And I'm going to work that into the show kind of unprompted, unscripted, because it was a really interesting topic. And, and we, you know, I have a whole episode dedicated to fit points. I don't know what number it is. I'll look it up in a little bit. But there's a whole show dedicated to fit points. But what do we know about fit points is that, that the difference between maintaining your weight and losing your weight is about six fit points. Sorry, six, six points a day. So that's right. When you reach goal, when you, when you hop on the scale for the very last time in a weight loss mode and you switch your tracker over to maintenance, you get six extra points a day. And those six points, you get to determine how many of them you need to maintain your weight. So, so there are some points when that, when you reach goal, for many of us, activity levels pick up because we start feeling a lot better. We can do things that we couldn't do before. So then we start earning these fit points and we think we have the ability to eat them. So you get six extra points for, for simply being no longer in a weight loss mode, up to six points to work with. And then as your activity increases, you say, how many of those do I want to eat as well? Because let's face it, when you start working out more, you do need more f- more fuel for your body. So rule number one when it comes to extra points at your goal weight. Now, I preface all this with saying if you are not at your goal weight and your activity level isn't you know extreme, then, then use your fit points as extra credit in your weight loss. Use that to frame your mind. Use your activity level to get your mind right and to keep you on plan, not to, to try and lose weight. But let's say you've, you've made goal. You're at lifetime. You're working out more. What I want you to do with your fit points is I want you to look and see how many you're earning. And if you earn on a typical week, you know, let's say you, you earn, you know, 10, uh, 10,000 steps a day for a typical week. What I want you to do is anything above that. So if this week is a little intense and you're doing a little more activity and you're now earning 20,000 steps a day, let's just say, because you're running for a half marathon or maybe even a full marathon, well, then you look at that additional 10,000 steps and you start using those and converting those to fit points and you can eat about a quarter of them. Roughly 25% of those things you can convert to food, but when you do that, you've really got to make a healthy choice. Because what happens to us, if we start working out solely for the sake of getting additional food, what a lot of us end up doing, and what I ended up doing many times and where I had many troubles on this plan before, is I would work out for the sake of food. I would work out so I could go have pizza. I would work out so I could have extra wings. I would work out so I could drink more soda. And all that did was keep my bad habits alive, and it kept my unhealthy eating alive, all my unhealthy habits, it kept reigniting them. So for so long, I'd work the plan. I would lose 30, 40, 50 pounds, whatever it took. And then I would slowly increase my, my bad habits would, would creep back in. And I never really truly transformed my, myself. I never truly broke the addiction to the bad eating habits that got me in this mess in the first place. When we talk about this being a lifestyle, when we say this is a lifestyle journey, what we really mean is that you have to change the way you eat. And if you change the way you eat, then you have to start developing good eating habits. And let's face it, an entire pizza per, per sitting is not necessarily a good eating habit. So if you go run a half marathon just to solely eat a, a whole pizza, the habit is never really broken. The addiction is never really broken. And then the days you don't run the half marathon, you struggle again 
to rechange your lifestyle and rechange your habits. So, so when it comes to fit points, that's where we're going to talk here. When it comes to fit points, anything above and beyond a typical week, that's where you can kind of experiment. Start with 25%. See where those are. And you only do this when you get to your goal weight so that you see exactly what impact it has. If you're, if you're still working towards your goal, then again, know that you've done some extra credit in your weight loss mode. Those fit points will get you there. So that's where we're going to talk about fit points. And so, um, you know, there are many people out there. You know, I see on, on Facebook, Kathleen writes in, says she's, she's run a marathon and 20 pounds overweight and fully trained. You can do that. You absolutely can do that. So keep up the great work. I mean, running and exercise, all of that can be done long before you hit your goal weight. That wasn't the, the intent of the topic. The intent was to tell you that as, as your, as your activity increases, your hunger increases. Make the best choice with those extra points. You know, and use roughly a quarter of anything above and beyond what you've normally eaten and go from there and experiment. The whole part of this process is we have to figure out what works for us, right? So whatever, whatever someone tells you to do, you have to, you have to take that as a guide and experiment with it and go from there. So that's where we go on fit points. Now, D- Diane writes in and Diane says, uh, hi, Mike. I kind of feel like we are good friends, even though we are missing the small detail involving a face to face meeting. I just want to let you know what's going on with me. In August, I'm moving from Illinois to my home in New Orleans. I'm very happy to be rejoining my family and friends after 16 years of living in the Midwest. Happily, I am returning home at my desired weight, and I have not had a craving for a Reese's peanut butter cup in over four months. I can wear whatever I want. The home that we are moving into has a pool, and I can't wait to buy a new bathing suit and go swimming. I am not ashamed of being seen in public in a public pool, and I don't plan to feel that way ever again. My life is transformed, and my relationship with my, with my body is much changed. I just earned my second degree at 55 years of age, and I'm planning to look for a job as a web designer or IT technician. Everything is different, and it's all due to how I've treated my body and my mindset. As a Weight Watcher employee, I hope to transfer to the New Orleans area and exercise my roles of leader, receptionist, and or personal coach. If there's no need for me, however, then I will be content to be a member in a meeting room, which is what I am anyways. I will continue to use your support on my journey. I will continue also to keep in touch with you as I like the process of touching base with you just like a big brother. I never had a brother and I always wanted one. Thank you for sharing your life with us. Thank you for opening yourself up as much as you have. It's not an easy thing to do for everyone. You've done it brilliantly, and I think your words resonate with a lot of members. Your show has created a huge space for members to be and explore a tool that is so important to us all, the reason for being. Isn't that really what your why is, your reason for being? It's the reason we want to get up every day, the reason we want a job that pays our worth, the reason we put good food in our bodies and expend energy to exercise it so that we are strong enough to tackle whatever life challenges we have next to tackle. Our why is the key. In my meetings, I call something as important as this the key to the kingdom. It provides the good life by fueling our wants to create what we need to have that why realized. So thank you for opening up this conversation even further than Weight Watchers has I know I'm very grateful to have you as my wingman, and I'm definitely down with assuming that role for you as well, Diane. Well, Diane, uh, first off, congratulations on the move. That, that's exciting. Uh, how cool is it going to be when you move back to your hometown as a whole different person? You're at your goal weight. You're buying bathing suits. You're hopping in a pool. You feel completely different. You look completely different. It's going to be such a joy when you, when you start over in a new town, even though it's a familiar town. You've been gone for quite a while. When you start over... You walk in as a person at a goal. You leave that weight loss story behind, even though you're never going to forget it. I get that part of it. But when you meet new people, the story doesn't come up. They instantly accept you for, for someone who's at goal and, and living a healthy life. Now, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through here. And, and I really appreciate what you said about, you know, let's focus on the why. And, and, and Weight Watchers kind of led me in that direction. And like I said in the opening of my show, that my weight loss journey failed every time I focused on how. You know, if I learned a food hack and I learned a food trick and I said, you know, make this because it's only one point versus this versus two points, all this, I didn't know why I was doing that. 
I knew how I could do it, and, and the how got me very close to goal many times, but it never was strong enough to, to hold my attention. So once I figured out on this journey that the why is what got me to goal, everything I did revolved around the why. And I always say this, if you know why you're doing it, the how just shows up. I've said this before, the how is different every meal. Every single meal, the how I'm going to get to goal and how I'm going to stay at goal is different. But what's important to me is that I never, ever have to worry about failing a PT test ever again. And in your case, you never, ever have to worry about putting on a bathing suit in public, right? You know it's going to look good. You know it's going to fit good. You're doing fantastic work, and that is your why. So you're, you're feeling amazing. I know that. And so I'm, I'm excited to hear about your journey. I know when you get to New Orleans, you know, if you have the right mindset, which you clearly do, it would be, it would be a shame if your services are not put to use as, as to continue being a leader. I'm certain when you get down there and you, and you talk to the folks and you get settled in a custom, uh, they're going to want you to bring you on the team. So keep up the great work. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's very, very cool that you said, you know, continue to use and keep in touch and, and think of it like a big brother. Because I think that a lot of us in this journey is what really makes it so real is that we can relate to each other. Uh, the hashtag better together, uh, that means something, right? And, and I fully agree that, that better together is how we got here. And, and so when I followed this journey the first time, I, you know, the first few times I did it alone. It wasn't until I got into Connect and, and Connect taught, taught me how to look for my why uh, that I got there. So absolutely, let's stay in touch. Let's stay connected and let's get it done. So Diane, great job living a great, healthy life of lifetime. Your mindset is key, and I can tell that'll keep you there for a long, long time. Karen writes in and Karen says, hi, Mike. Uh, thank you for your podcast and your inspiration. We have connected online at the Weight Watcher Connect since early 2016. I joined Weight Watchers December 31st, 2015, online only. Sorry I missed the Facebook Live of the, of the podcast. Uh, I connected with you immediately on Connect as my husband was in the Air Force as well. I have been online for the last 17 months. My why has driven me to heights I've never known. Both of my parents passed on their respective 66th birthday. I joined two weeks after my 65th birthday. I was going to break that family tradition. Tradition. My two precious grandchildren are worth a healthy lifestyle to play with them. I was truly a couch potato at 279 pounds. I lost 10 pounds, then 20 pounds on different meds before Weight Watchers. I was on diabetes medication. My starting weight was 237, size 24. I'm currently down... 71 pounds in a size 14. I walk three to four miles a day, multiple muscle strength training, some days with weights. I am off diabetes medication. My A1C is down to 5.4 from 6.8. The Connect family has been my virtual leader as there is a plethora of motivation and inspiration. My determination and spiritually, spiritual, my determination spiritually has guided me through this journey. I hope to lose about another 20 pounds to reach goal and will start the meetings in a few weeks to obtain goal and lifetime. Although I do not receive the bling from the meetings, I reward myself with new sizes in my wardrobe. Thank you for all you do for this country. Connect yourself, your family, and me, Karen. And then Karen ends it with some garbage at the bottom. She says, I'm a proud New York Yankees and New York Giants fan. I'm not sure what that means, but... Um, I don't know. It apparently, it means something to her. So I kind of will throw it in there because she threw it in her email. But uh, go Red Sox and go Patriots. Let's, let's just go get that knocked out. Uh, Karen, phenomenal work, right? Um, very, very proud of you. Uh, your why and you know seeing your parents pass at your 66th birthday uh, and you recognizing that you have the ability to change your family tree. You have the ability to make a difference in your life. Uh, and, and your starting weight at 234 in a size 20, 20, 237 in a size 24, you dropped 71 pounds. You didn't do that by accident. 71 pounds is focus, is dedication, is determination, and you got it done by staying engaged in the process. You did that because you focused on your why. Your why was strong enough to carry you down. Your why was you stayed focused, you got there, 
And as a result, you have regained some health benefits that, that were previously uh, unre- unattainable for you. So down off your medication, that's got to be huge. When you walk into your doctor and your doctor takes you off of your diabetes medication, you have to understand that you did that, right? No one else did that but you. So when all the sacrifice that you've made, made as you start working to change your healthy lifestyle, you were rewarded when your A1C count went from 5.4 uh, down to 5.4 from 6.8. That's, that's incredible work. Now let's focus, continue on your mindset. Let's continue focusing on your why because that clearly got you to where you need to be. But when you end your email and you say you hope to lose another 20 pounds and reach goal, I've said it before, hope is not a plan. You didn't hope to lose 71 pounds. You worked your tail off to lose 71 pounds. You didn't lose it by luck. It has nothing to do with luck. You woke up every single morning focused, engaged, determined, disciplined to get this done. That is what it's going to take to get these last 20 pounds off. has nothing to do with hope. has nothing to do with luck. So continue doing what you're doing, stay focused, and you'll get it there. So Karen, way to go. I, I'm super duper proud of you. Uh, happy New Year for joining on December 31st of 2015. What a great year. The phenomenal year. It's the year you took charge and took care of your life. You've got to celebrate that for a long time. Congratulations. Tammy writes in and Tammy says, um, I'm struggling. Plateau since the end of March. I'm getting discouraged, still tracking and exercising. What can I try? Tammy, uh, first and foremost, let's, let's talk about episode 72. If you're not tuned into that, uh, then I would, I would say go back and listen to episode 72 first. Uh, let's get that one in and get that into your brain, get that process. But, but let's talk about a plateau. There's a such thing as a plateau. It's a, it's a real thing. Uh, I think a lot of us, a lot of times, we mistake a real plateau for our inability to stay on the plan the way we were when we started. We start the plan on fire. We get really motivated. We, we track everything. We, we make sure we go to our meeting. We weigh everything. We pass on a lot of the things that we, that we don't think we should have on the plan. And we do our, we are really disciplined. We start getting some success on the plan. Complacency sets in. Complacency says, I look good. I feel good. I feel better. I'm down 15, 20 pounds, whatever it is. And then all of a sudden you, you reach for one extra French fry. You reach for an extra peanut butter cup. You reach for an extra Hershey's kiss and you don't track it. And the difference between maintaining your weight and losing weight is up to six points a day. So generally that's when the, a lot of us are hitting this plateau. We're hitting the plateau because we are not working the plan. If you look on Connect, you'll see a lot of the posts from the, um, you know, I'm not one, but if you see a lot of folks other than the Weight Watcher ambassador folks, they got the, the hashtag or the, um, the disclaimer at the bottom of their email it says Weight Watcher members can expect to lose one to two pounds a week if they're following the program. So if you're not following the program as designed, then, then that could be, you know, where you're at. So let's get back to the very, very basics. Very, very basic is we track everything, we, we weigh everything, we, we measure everything, we, we estimate portion sizes properly. If you're doing that, then you're on a plateau, then, then we got to look at it a little differently. But generally speaking, I think many of us who are on a plateau, it, it is our, it's, we're just not working the plan to the same level of intensity. Now, let's talk about a, a legitimate plateau. If you're on a legitimate plateau, you're tracking properly, you're exercising properly, you're doing everything right and you're still on a plateau, then that's fantastic work. That's where you need to be. There is two ways to break a plateau, right? You can, you can either gain weight or you can lose weight. Maintaining weight is a great feeling. You know, if we're maintaining our weight, that's fantastic work. So, but if you're riding a plateau, then all of a sudden you, you say, okay, if I stick with this, if I continue tracking, if I continue exercising, continue, then you will eventually, the, the plateau has to break at some point. Increase your activity, uh, maybe continue then at looking with the food. But when you break the plateau and you break it with a weight loss, it feels really good. On a plateau and quitting the program because you're because you're not you're frustrated with it, will will certainly lead to a new start date. It'll certainly lead to you rejoining. So stay away from the complacency trap. Focus on your blue dots. Focus on your tracker. Look at the foods that are in your tracker. Focus heavily on estimating properly your portion sizes. Weigh and measure where you need to. 
uh, and go after this with the energy that you had on day one. Day one, week one, week two, out of the gate, you are strong. If you're not still working the plan to that level of intensity, then that's where I would ask you to go. Go focus on that and uh, and get it done. Tammy, thank you for your email. The cool thing is, is you absolutely have the ability to get this done. I believe you can do it. So go do it. Next up, Barbie writes in and she says, uh, Hi, Mike. Thank you for the postcard. I was happy to help in any way. I admire our military very much. I hope your meeting went well. Uh, I was just saying today when I wanted a little popcorn, you're saying about when you're out of points. I even said it out loud and walked away from the popcorn. So now I can put your saying up on the fridge along with the other one that you sent me. I was uh, on an eight-day plateau, but that is okay. No worries. And I ate clean through it all. The weight is moving now. And though I am down 47 uh, pounds and a hair away from 40 pounds off. I don't exercise heavy since my heart arrhythmia are an issue, but I do walk and lift five pound weights every other day and it has come off now on to 50 pounds off. I hope you are doing well, Barbie. Uh, so Barbie, here we go. So we've talked about this many times through email back and forth. Uh, you do not have to exercise to get this plan to work. This plan works very well if you simply are mindful to what you're eating, you are engaged in the process, you're tracking everything you eat, uh, that is what's going to get you to maintain and lose your weight to get to goal. Now, any activity we can do on top of that certainly does help. More often than not, it helps with our mindset. It helps keep our head in the game. So I'm glad to see that you're just walking more in a five-pound weight. That's all you have to do. So when we, when we look at this program, I've said this a couple of times as well. When we look at this program, we think we have to exercise. The definition of exercise means we put on gym shoes, put on gym shorts, and we go work out. But there are things we can do that are called movement, and we can increase our movement without doing a dang thing when it comes to exercise. So the clothes you're wearing right now, you can move more in them. You know, a few extra steps here and there, it all adds up. So you're doing very well. Now let's address the, the second paragraph in here. Uh, when you're saying that you, you wanted a little popcorn and you recognize the saying of when you're out of points, stop eating points. Man, you recognize that on your own. And that is the power. That is what's gotten you close to 50 pounds gone. Because what's happening is, is, is you are now in control. When we say on Weight Watchers, you can have whatever it is you want. We mean that. Right? You can, you can eat whatever you want. You can have whatever you want. Don't you want to be in control? Isn't that what you want? So, so for me, when I'm at a point to stop eating point, that's what got me to goal because I wanted more than anything else. I wanted to rid myself of the shame and the embarrassment and all those issues that I carried around for so long. So when someone says you can have whatever you want on Weight Watchers, I say, I, I do. I have the freedom. I have the control. I have the ability to, to maintain my weight. Boy, that is, is something else. So, so when you in your own right, when you recognize that, you are now, you've now made goal. That's right. So the scale doesn't know. The scale hasn't caught up yet. And that's irrelevant. We don't care about the scale number per se. But in your mind, you've made goal because you now understand what it takes to win. So continue doing everything that you've done to get to where you are. If you've lost 48 pounds, you, you didn't do it on accident. You did it with focus, discipline, dedication, determination, and that will carry you to goal. So great job, Barbie. Glad to hear from you. Keep up the amazing work and uh, let me know when you get to goal. I know you can do that. Now, folks, if you're listening, uh, depending on where you're catching this show, uh, if you're on the Facebook live feed watching it right now, that's cool. Thank you for that. Otherwise, it's going to be a replay for the rest of you. It'll be in the podcast app. Go to the App Store if you haven't already. Go to uh, your Google Play Store, your, your Apple Store. Search for Wise Advice. You'll download the app. It's completely free. It's my gift to you because, the, as I said more than once, the Connect community completely saved my life. I don't know where I would be without them. So, so I want to make sure this, this show becomes available to anyone who wants to have access to it. I don't care. You know, I'm not looking for you to, to, uh, to give back in any sort of way. I just want you to get to goal. When you get to goal, when you maintain your goal, and when you get to that point in your life, 
uh, you'll recognize the feeling I have at that point. That is so powerful. It's something that I want you to have. So the app is out there for you to get there. Uh, it's on, on iHeartRadio. If you're on iHeartRadio, thank you for listening there. Stitcher Radio. You can subscribe. But uh, however you're tuned into the show, I appreciate you continuing to share it so that other people know that it's out there. And we, we continue to work this program together because we are better together. And uh, we celebrate together. We laugh together. We cry together. Um, it's, it's just part of this community that no one else understands. Uh, we, we are a special community and, and folks who really, who walk this journey with you because you know how to get there. You know how to get to goal and the goal should be the goal, right? Getting to a place where you hop on the scale and you never ever want to lose weight again. That is an amazing feeling. And when you get there, it's not about a number. It's about a feeling and you will recognize it. So when you get to goal, I want to hear from you. As you struggle along the way, I want to hear from you. I want to know what you're thinking. I want to know what you're feeling. And we work them in as part of the show. Go to fatdag.com. Click on listen now. Send in your celebrations, your comments. You can email me in at onair at fatdag.com. But that is going to do it for this time. Remember, losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus.